When most of us are reading a novel, especially a longer one, there are a couple primary things that keep us coming back. And this is when we're reading for pleasure. The amount that we're entertained by the story that we're reading is the number one draw, but also how impressed we are with the prose. I think most readers, especially when they're younger, have really profound moments where they're realizing what writers are doing and wonder how they pulled it off, what could possibly have been going through their head that they got what's on the page so perfect. And so while I've found dozens of other novels to be more entertaining than this one, I have never been more impressed by a novel in my life. I'm talking about Blood Meridian by Cormac McCarthy. Relative to other American classics like The Scarlet Letter or Moby Dick, Blood Meridian hasn't been out for that long. It's only been out for, what, like 60 years? Less than that? And part of what gives it its power is its basis in reality. The nonfiction book that pairs best with this is Empire of the Summer Moon by S.C. Gwynn. One of the things that lends Blood Meridian extra potency as you're reading it is that at the beginning of each chapter, and I'll go to the first one so that I'm not spoiling anything, I almost gave some stuff away. At the beginning of each chapter, there are these little, there's this little blurb. It's just a series of very brief bullet points about what's to come. And it's a constant reminder that this level of violence that's depicted in Blood Meridian was what expanded the American empire westward. The American empire met with the Comanches and a few other tribes, and there was so much fighting. This book in large part is about scalping, but then it also obviously gets into violence as a much broader theme, war, it's inevitability, and there's a character called the Judge who you'll hear mentioned quite frequently in comments or just anything written about Blood Meridian. And I would rather not speak about the judge. If you know nothing about the judge and you're keen to read this book, I would most definitely recommend that you just dive right in. Don't look anything up about him. Okay, so those, those blurbs I was talking about, this is the one at the very beginning of the first chapter. A couple of the things that'll mention is childhood in Tennessee runs away, New Orleans fights, Judge Holden, and a fray burning of the hotel. And so you can imagine, especially as the plot starts to mirror real world events, how haunting it can be to get that bit of a preview of what you're about to read, knowing that the vast majority of the events in this book basically took place. So in addition to reading Empire of the Summer Moon, I think that pairs really well with this because Empire of the Summer Moon is nonfiction. So it's not fiction that has a very strong, well-researched foundation in reality. It's nonfiction, but it reads like it's fiction. After you read Blood Meridian for the first time, give it a little while. And then if you want to get more out of the novel, which you definitely can, this is one of the most rereadable American classics just for the sheer depth of each of the themes, I would recommend that you read Moby Dick. This is the book that influenced Blood Meridian the most, and I would argue that Blood Meridian took what Moby Dick did, which this by itself is probably the most original American work, but I would argue that Blood Meridian is one of the few to strongly reference this book and take what it did further apply it to a different part of America. It's so, so cool. I would definitely recommend reading this book if you can get past the violence.